Hey, what's going on? I am Bryce Lewis, uh, 105 kilo world champion for now in the classic division for IPF. I'm here talking about some deadlifts. We're gonna talk about conventional and sumo deadlifts, and we're gonna work our way uh, through some technique tips. I kinda wanna start with you just laying on the ground here. I wanna see what your hip range of motion is like. So if you can just lay on your back. Um, some people are, you can just relax. Some people are tighter out to the side and some people are tighter, just be totally relaxed. Um, you've got a ton of hip mobility. Um, we were talking a little bit earlier about your athletic background. You did some bodybuilding before this. Did you play any sports? Uh, I wrestled and I do jiu-jitsu currently. Cool. I'm sure you did a lot of stretching when you were wrestling. Not as much as I should have. Okay. Yeah. Well, you certainly have good hip mobility and some of that is just like genetic. Um, some of it is stuff you can practice, but I don't see any problem why you wouldn't be comfortable in a sumo position, but we'll start with conventional. Um, we'll see how things go. And instead of teaching you from the ground up, we're just gonna kind of have you, since you've already been deadlifting a little bit, let's just start off uh, with you deadlifting and we'll just make some corrections and observations as we go. Cool. Um, so I'm gonna kind of be asking for permission for a lot of this stuff. I, th I think the the process of correcting technique is really best if, if it's collaborative. If I'm asking questions, if I'm giving you um, suggestions based on your observations, instead of just trying to cram information down your throat and force stuff, I wanna see how things feel, I wanna ask you kinda of how things are going as we go forward. Um, where's the pressure on your feet generally right now? It feels like just maybe a centimeter over the heel a little bit, so not all the way so far back where my toes are gonna to come off. Cool. But just kinda of right on the back end of the arch of my foot. Got it. So one of the problems is that so much of what we're doing is individual. Like technique is so individual. And you can take 10 people and say, what's the cue that resonates most with you? And, and we can talk beginner levels up to top level athletes and say, hey, what's the cue that resonates most with you? And, and you'd get 10 different answers. So I'm gonna give you kind of what works best for the majority of the athletes I work with. Caveat, some of this stuff needs to be refined over time. Second caveat, you might need to practice this stuff for a few months in order for it to feel ultimately better for you. So what we're looking for primarily is the technique that you can lift safest uh, and the most load with, kind of the com combination of those two things. Um, so if, if I put you in a low bar position where you get bicep pain every time you step under the barbell, even if you can lift the most weight there, that's not the best position for you. So what I noticed first off is that yeah, the weight is pretty um, kind of pushed back. Um, and I've seen the best results for people when we're not driving just through the heel, but kind of through the full foot. Um, if you can imagine three points of contact on your foot, um, this is a, kind of a pretty athletic idea, but um, big toe or the, um, the ball under your big toe, um, pinky toe and your heel, somewhere in between those, um, that's a good place to start. So let's see how that goes for a few reps. I find people are just kind of able to drive a little bit better through that position. Um, everything's easy at 135 for you. We talked about the fact that your max is 405. So in order to test out how some of the stuff feels, we might need to start adding a little bit of load to the bar, yeah. working our way up to 225, 275, somewhere around there. Um, but before we do, one more thing. For conventional deadlift specifically, I think it's better to have the bar actually a little bit away from your shins at the start. Um, and this is just about a vertical bar path. So when you have the bars, the bar against your shins at the start, um, you kind of trace your hips backwards and up at the start. And we want that first movement to be simultaneous movement of the hips and the shoulders. So both of those things kind of moving upwards at the same time, instead of this movement backwards of the hips to clear space so the bar can travel. So gap the bar by about a centimeter or so. A little more. There you go. Does that feel like a straight pull to you? A little bit. It's a little bit uh, uncomfortable at first since this is the first time. Okay. Not having it right up against the shin, but it does feel a little bit more like a perfectly straight line. Generally speaking, like uh, above the knee, that bar is going to be gliding against your legs the whole way. But below the knee, we usually see a little bit of space. For most lifters I've worked with, again.
cool. So there's kind of a few things that are really individual preference. Um, we've got a range of foot stances that you might be in. Um, where you are right now is, looks perfectly comfortable, so I don't really want to change that. But you could go slightly narrower, um, up to basically with your feet directly under your hips. Um, and you could go a little bit wider. Some of this is comfort-based. Um, athletes that are a little bit larger overall tend to deadlift conventional a little bit wider, um, just kind of clearing more space for the midsection. Um, but again, where you are is perfectly fine. We looked from the side, we saw that your back was um, super neutral. I saw simultaneous movement of the hip and the shoulder. So basically you're standing up and we don't see any wasted motion, which is fantastic. So let's throw a little weight on the bar. Great. Um, do you go straight to two plates? Yep. All right. Keep the same foot position for this one? Yeah, everything the same. Um, just keep that gap just a little bit. And that's really the only thing that I saw that's even gotcha. something to focus on. All right, that's good. I'm not super sure, but it kind of looked like you were rowing the barbell a little bit off the start. Um, so a little bit of your arms engaged to pull the barbell. Really try to treat those arms as hooks. Do you pull normally with a um, mixed grip? I do. Okay, let's do that. Yep. Uh, I don't wanna, I don't wanna add any new pieces for you. So let's go mixed grip and see if anything changes. Um, awesome, absolutely awesome. Some of the stuff that you're doing at the start may be good cueing, um, but you lose all that position when you go down anyways. So you may as well just go down and grab the bar and then set up into that position. Gotcha. If that kind of stuff helps you remember what to do, you're more than welcome to keep doing it. But I think a lot of people have these elaborate deadlift setups um, and you see them go through all this tightness stuff in the upper body and as soon as they go down to grab the bar, they relax anyways and grab the bar. So if we're setting from the bottom up, which means that we're going to get our breath from the bottom. You may as well grab the barbell, get your breath, and then get tight, and then initiate that pull. Um, sometimes we have athletes, either equipped or raw, that set up from the top, they take their breath. In that case, you might want to set up rigid at the top because everything is going to be stable, your breath is still in, and then you go down and pull. Um, but if we're setting up from the bottom, and I think I like most athletes too, um, you can kind of let some of that stuff fall by the wayside and simplify. Um, Second thing is, I know we're focusing on technique, I want you to try to pull fast. So um, give yourself one simple cue, uh, and in this case, I just want that pressure to be even on your foot. That's the only thing I want you to focus on, and pull fast. Come on. Good. One more. Fantastic. Much better. Um, really one more thing is that I think your knees are locking a little later than I would uh, like them to. So I want your knees extending just a little bit earlier and I want your hips to be the primary finisher of the motion. Um, and, and right now I'm seeing you get to about here and knees are still bent, then knees straighten. So this takes a while to correct because you've built this motor pattern over years and years of deadlifting. Um, and to ask you to reverse that chain is a little bit difficult. Uh, we can work on that with a band. Um, this is something that I'd love to do. Let me find uh, an average band around here. Yeah. This is perfect. I'm just going to tie this to something heavy. This looks good. Uh, it, it lets you deadlift without needing a barbell uh, and provides a little bit of counter resistance. So hop in that, put it around your waist, just a little lower. Cool. Step forward so you have some tension and you're probably leaning forward a little bit. 
Yeah, so you'll find some point of balance there. And you can just go through deadlift reps here and kind of feel like you actually have a little bit of resistance. Um, this is a good way to practice. I have athletes do this um, before training sessions. You can get in 10 reps or so, and this is good activation for the glutes and back as well. Um, and here you can really practice the sequencing of the knee and the hip extension. So go ahead and practice a little bit of that. Yeah, exactly. And the real reason for this isn't that it's gonna make the lift easier to finish or anything like that, but it may make it easier to get white lights in competition. Um, kind of showing that the shoulders are finishing back, um, showing that the knees are locked at full extension, and kind of avoiding the tendency for your knees to re-bend. Cool. Plus the glutes are a pretty big mover in this second phase of the deadlift, so we may as well take advantage of them. Uh, and what we're experiencing now is, is even more the case when we talk about sumo coming up, but for conventional it still applies. Cool. So see if you can do that on a rep here. Cool. Yeah, fantastic. Um, that's really all I want to do um, for this. So maybe we'll throw on another 25 pounds and just see if it looks about the same, uh, a little bit heavier. Uh, but you already had a fantastic start. I, I don't like rebuilding things from the ground up if there's nothing important to rebuild. Um, and, and a note about technique is that it takes reps, like practice for any skill, free throws, um, volleyball swings, tennis swings, like you just need pure practice. So what we're doing today is, is great, but this is just kind of giving the start that you need to refine on your own over the next month or so. Um, and ideally we would check back in in a little bit, add one more thing, maybe add one more thing and just kind of make it a process in sequence and not like, hey, here's 10 things, go fix all these things at once. Yeah. Um, but yeah, this is fantastic. You're lifting safely, effectively, and, and uh, I, I wouldn't change anything. Great. Cool. So maybe throw another 25 pounds, do another few reps. Yeah, I got one here. It's funny about technique, like we want to focus on it, we want good technique, but it's the kind of thing that if you think about while you're lifting, performance tends to drop off. Like a few of those first reps were slow, they were shaky. As soon as we started saying like, bro, just lift, things started smoothing, smoothing out. Come on. Good. Uh, I'm still seeing a teeny bit of bend in the elbow. Um, it's fine right now, but at some point that's adding a little bit of tension on that muscle, leading to a slightly higher chance that you might pull that bicep later on. Um, I don't like to talk about injury or chance of injury because we might get nocebo effects and make it more likely. Still, relax your arms and treat them as much as hooks as possible. Um, and a slight note, eventually you might move your grip in a little bit. Um, we're giving up maybe a centimeter of pull um, which isn't much right now, but eventually it might be. So the wider we go, as you can see, like the higher up the bar is. So we, we basically want the arms to be as, as long as possible and that's directly below the shoulder. Gotcha. Yep. Um, yeah, you wanna do one more? Yep. Okay. Yep. Yeah, I like that. Nice. Cool. Yeah, I love it. Great. Sumo? Yep, let's do it. You want to start back at one plate? That's great. Okay. All right. 
I want to go directly upwards in weight because uh, I want to see if things change as the weight gets heavier. Gotcha. Um, especially in sumo, it's really easy to have a good position at light loads. But things change a lot as we get heavier. Yeah. I'm going to be looking to see if your starting position changes. So I don't want you to focus on changing anything. I just want to see if things change. It looks like you spent a lot of time on, on uh, technique. I have uh, before because injuries and being dumb when I was younger. Yeah. Sure. That's good. When you miss lifts, where do you miss them? Sumo, right off the floor. Okay, cool. Um, I think we can make things uh, a change for the better. Uh, and like, we're talking about small changes here. So positioning is great. It's not that I'm discounting any of the hard work that you've done. Um, things look fantastic. I think we might be able to change things for the better in the long run in terms of the load you can lift. But this is a safe position. It's super awesome. Um, ideally, I'd have you wear a deadlift socks so we can just ride that bar up your legs and not tear up your shins. So for all of you guys out there, um, definitely deadlift socks. You can literally just glide the bar all the way up. But um, if we get a little blood, it's not, not the worst. Um, can you take your normal stance? Yep. That's what I was going to say. I totally forgot to grab those. OK, cool. Uh, what are you kind of looking at when you set up? Uh, lately, as far as uh, probably about six weeks ago, I've been focusing more on having, trying to have my toes pointed out toes with that towards the plate. Yeah. Before I had them straightforward. Okay. Someone at the gym mentioned, you know, maybe try opening up the hips a little bit. Yep. Pointing the toes outward. Awesome. Um, you know, usually just look at the, the break in the middle. Okay. Try to get the edge of the shin bone right outside that break. Yep. That's kind of where I feel most comfortable. Fantastic. All right, so let's keep the stance where it is. I think that's fine. I want you to start with your hips slightly higher. Gotcha. Um, so keep the bar against your shins just as normal. This is different from conventional we were talking about earlier. Um, but your back is so vertical off the start. Um, if we can bring the camera around to the side uh, and get you to just set up in your starting position. Um, what we want to look at is the angle here of his torso compared to the angle of the uh, femur out here to the side. We've got kind of a right angle here, but this is a little bit closed. I want to see if we can open this up a little bit by having you bend over just a little bit more. And that's going to necessarily mean your hips are just slightly further back. See if this feels stronger. Yep, yep. Okay. Does that feel any different to you? It does. It okay. feels a lot better. Yeah. It feels like yeah, I think that's what it's all about. So when people learn how to deadlift, we look at guys like Yuri Belkin and Andrei Belyev and these people who have textbook form. Their, their levers are built for it. So they have kind of short femurs, longer torsos, and that position just feels a little bit more natural, especially with the fact that there's, you know, 600 plus pounds on the barbell. On a deadlift bar, by the time that the bar actually leaves the floor, the hip angle is already a lot more open. So we want that hip angle to be as open as possible so that you basically have as much force out of your quads and your glutes as possible. Uh, and that's all we were trying to do here, is, is find that good position for you. So you want to throw on uh, the 25? That looked really strong, by the way. I use those um, uh, the yellow ones that you guys have for deadlifting. Oh, okay. Those are awesome. Yeah, it's like a like a durable sock. Yeah. Yeah, beautiful. Come on. Good. Do one more for me. All right, cool. Uh, I think that was a worthwhile change. Um, that looks really good. 
And we're gonna add, now that we've done that, we're gonna add just one more thing today. Um, as you are finishing, you're shrugging your shoulders upwards. And I don't want that. I want you as much as possible to try to reach for the floor with your shoulders. So whether you wanna think about having ape arms or whether you wanna think about um, the weight pulling you down or whether you wanna think about just reaching your shoulders towards the floor or relaxing or whatever kind of cue resonates with you best, um, we want those shoulders to relax because you don't have to pull the barbell as far. Um, we're getting rid of tension in the system where it's not needed um, and we can just finish a little bit lower. Does that shrug lead to that bend of the arms that you've been seeing also? Um, no, because I saw, that, I saw that earlier in the lift and here we're just seeing it at the finish. Um, so that, that seems a little bit um, not related. Shoulders down, shoulders down, 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 down. Better. Cool. Good. Nice. Um, if that's hard to do, you can use straps because straps kind of make your hand relax and, and therefore it's kind of easier to let go of a little bit of tension in the arms. Gotcha. Um, just as a way to learn that. Uh, but ultimately, yeah, we do want those shoulders to kind of be low and, and uh, not necessarily relax because we still need some tension in the upper back. Um, but we want the shoulders to finish low and of course back so you get the down signal. Gotcha. That's it. Um, tiny corrections here. Uh, you already started with a fantastic base. So when it comes to correcting technique, we, we kind of take what's there and then make small tweaks and we make them sequentially over a longer period of time. Gotcha. Um, if I had to say kind of like guidelines on how we correct technique in the first place, that's what we're after is, is give the athlete something they can work on, make a change and then add something new down the line. Um, this is awesome. I, I would have loved to throw on another 100 pounds on here and see how things move, but I know it's there. Awesome. Thank you. Cool, Appreciate man. it.